uh, my name is Wei I'm come from Donghua University. Uh, our group quite focused on one type of polymer, bioelastomer. And in Donghua, actually, we are very famous for the fiber uh, fabrication. So we do something that related to this technology. We do 3D printing, then they uh, then used it for diverse biomedical applications. Yeah, since uh, actually the Dorothy have uh, yeah, brief introduced uh, me, I, I would just, uh, just uh, uh, quickly go through my background. Actually, I graduated from Shanghai Jiao University. Uh, then I joined the Shanghai Institute of Organic Chemistry for my PhD. Uh, later, I, uh, I, I have uh, done my postdoctoral research in Georgia Institute of Technology and the University of Pittsburgh. And uh, uh, I was a visiting research as, uh, assistant professor in Univers University of Pittsburgh. And later, I, uh, I joined Bayer Material Science. Now the name is uh, Covestro. Yeah, uh, as an uh, innovation manager for a while. Then uh, now it's eight uh, years ago, I joined Donghua University. Uh, now I'm the chair of the Department of Composite Materials. We also set a research base of the textile materials for flexible electronics and the biomedical applications for China. Yeah, I would uh, also briefly introduce uh, my university. Yeah, my university called Donghua University. Uh, it is one of uh, the state key university in China, and uh, uh, it is uh, it joined a big national program to promote the high level the university. We call the one uh, two one one project, and uh, we uh, was established uh, uh, at uh, uh, nineteen fifty one. At that time, we uh, the name of our university is East uh, Eastern China Institute of uh, textile science and uh, technology. And uh, uh, later we renamed as a uh, China Textile University. Now we uh, are <laughs> is Donghua uh, uni University. Okay. Now, uh, yeah, we actually, for our uh, material, yeah, this uh, discipline, actually, we can record our history to uh, 19. Uh, 19, 1912, actually, uh, the founder was uh, uh, Mr. Jian Zhang, and uh, in in China is a very fam famous guy in the history. And uh, uh, later, after we set up Donghua Donghua University, our material uh, science and uh, engineering, the founder actually uh, is Dr. Bao Jinqian and uh, Dr. Bai Rongfang, they uh, both got uh, their uh, PhD degree from uh, one, uh, from uh, Europe and they, uh, and come back to China to build our uh, department and uh, college later and uh, and later yeah I actually uh, Dr. Qian what uh, was the Chairman of our uh, university, yeah. I actually, uh, our disciplination is uh, from name. You you can know uh, we are very famous for fiber. Yeah, we set up as the first. Uh, uh, we yeah produce the first Chinese synthetic fibers. Yeah, we uh, have set up uh, a national lab for fiber materials, and also we are technology source for all the three high performance fibers in China. We have a lot of national research bases. For example, the state key laboratory for modification of chemical fibers and the polymer materials. In the recent evaluation, national evaluation, every five years we give an evaluation, we got uh, the score of excellent. Yeah, this is the only excellent score uh, in the state key laboratory re related to polymer uh, field. Now we move to my research. Yeah, uh, our research, as we mentioned, focus on the elastomer, focus on the biodegradable, biocompatible elastomer. We call it a bioelastomer. It actually is very important for bi biomedicine applications. Uh, 
as we can, uh, as a mini, mini study already proved that the suitable elasticity can re, uh, resemble the ECM of the soft tissues. It can transfer the mechanical signals uh, uh, to the cells and tissue help their development. Yeah, also it can serve as uh, the, the tissue repl replacement temporarily, yeah, to uh, res resist the dynamic the deformation. Actually, bioelastomers has uh, uh, been widely uh, used for various uh, tissue regeneration applications and also recently for biodegradable sensors. Actually, according uh, the data from the Clavilit and the uh, Liticus, yeah, uh, three years ago, they mentioned, uh, yeah, the strangeable materials and device is the top three key emerging research front. So elastomer is very important for this uh, field. My today's topical actually divided uh, to uh, this three part, focus uh, on how to build uh, the tough and strong bio elastomers and how to build a smart bioelastomer and how to 3D print uh, the, yeah, the bioelastomers and also used for the tissue engineering and uh, also the elastic uh, electronics. First part, we are talking about uh, the mechanical property. Yeah, for the elastomer, actually the cost linking structure is essential. Because it is cost linked, so it have a value. Uh, it, it will have the elasticity. Yeah, uh, this is actually uh, both from the rubber we use every day and also, also elastic uh, in our body. This both the both ela elastomers are uh, very famous for their cross linked structures. So our key is how to build the polymer polymeric network, then uh, it will give us the good elast uh, elasticity. This is one of the uh, uh, major material we are uh, working on. It's called the polyglycylosebacicate. Uh, it made from the polycondensation, from the sebacicate acid and the glycid and the glycyl. Uh, yeah, it, uh, it, since it uh, uh, was created, yeah, now it's uh, almost 20 years ago, it has been widely used in various biomedical applications, especially rela related to heart and uh, vessels because it's modulus quite uh, uh, similar to this type of tissues. Yeah, it also biodegradable, yeah, uh, have will be demonstrated uh, uh, very good, uh, excellent biocompatibilities. One of the pro product bio our glue from PDS has been uh, proved has uh, been proved by FDA which are last year. Yeah, so it is very promising for the clinical translation. Uh, actually, my background is chemistry, so uh, my starting point is from how to make a bad PGS. I show here as PGS was made from the random polycondensation. So this this polycondensation is not that good controlled. It will give less defined structures, partly uh, causing uh, lower molecular weight, the high PDA, and uh, fair uh, mechanical properties. So it is uh, uh, very important how to make it better, for uh, how to make it uh, uh, high molecules, the narrow. PDI and also the linearity, we hope to improve it. This is uh, our work. Uh, we developed uh, acid induced epoxide ring opening polymerization. Use this polymerization, actually, uh, we can see uh, we can uh, uh, synthesize the essentially the thin chemical structure of PGS. We call it uh, uh, poly. Sebaco diglyceride, we call it uh, PG, PZ for short. And also uh, because the, this reaction is a two add two reaction. So the controllability is, vast, is much better than the formal random polycondensations. From uh, 
the data we can see actually uh, the molecule weight of the P set uh, was much higher than PGS and uh, the PDI is narrower and the linearity has been significantly uh, improved. Yeah, just uh, uh, for easy understanding, we can see, okay, P set is almost the linear materials and the PGS is highly branched, it's less controlled. And after cross-link, actually we can see the P set, the tensile strength, the maximum, sorry, the maximum strength also has both enhanced compared to the PGS. My, uh, it's more closer to the properties of vein and the valve. And the toughness, whole toughness of P set is around five times of PGS. The uh, then we are thinking how after synthesize the main backbone, we are also thinking can we improve the mechanical property further? Here we use the, the, the basic idea is heavily the cross linking. I show here uh, we still keep the chemical cross linking, the polyester, the basic uh, structures, and uh, also at the sun side trends, we intro we introduced we introduced the sum of the hydro uh, the hydrogen bonding unit I show here. They use this hybrid core cross link network. Uh, the hydrogen bondings served as a sacrificed bond. It can uh, dissipate the energy during deformation, and the covalent cross link can keep the structure uh, inter integrated. And also, actually, we uh, emphasize the, the in uh, the hydrogen bonding has two natures. One is uh, like, like show show here as uh, uh, the dark red. It is uh, uh, in we we call it as inter uh, interchain hydrogen bondings. When when this bond the type bondings the the number of the type bonding increased and the modulus will will become higher uh become higher as well. But also, uh, there are some other type of hydrogen bondings. For example, here is the light, light red uh, hydrogen bonding. We call it the intro, intro the molecular, uh, in, intro chain hydrogen bondings. This, this bonding actually, when, when, when you stretch it, stretch is a elastomer. Uh, it, uh, it will, uh, yes, yeah, so the elast, uh, this, this hydrogen bonding will keep. Uh, in tech until uh, it extended uh, uh, spe specific uh, string, then it will broken. So it will serve as exactly uh, find bonds to enhance the toughness, but it, it, uh, the contribution of this type of hydrogen bondings to the uh, modulus is very limited. Then use this method, we can produce the, the tough while still soft elastomer. This is actually the, uh, one of the challenges for the material because typically when you increase the cross linking, uh, the material will become stronger and tougher, but uh, the modulus will become much higher. Then it will mismatch to the mechanical properties of our uh, tissues. Okay, this is uh, uh, the result we can see our uh, elastomer can be stretched to five times uh, length and it is uh, uh, strong, can hand uh, yeah, uh, uh, 2,500 times heavier weight and from uh, this stress with uh, uh, strain curves we can see actually when you significantly increase the toughness, actual toughness was 11 times enhanced and the uh, slope actually essentially is uh, Young's modular still keep the almost the same much lower than other modification of PGS. After we got this uh, well tough while still soft skin like we call the skin like the uh, PZU elastomers 
uh, yeah, we can make it uh, as a very thin fields. It well attached to to our skin, our skin. Then if you uh, add some the conductive, for example, the civil nanowires to it, then it will become conductivity, conductive the el elastic the films. Then we can use it uh, to uh, detect the human motion. Okay, uh, this is the first story we are talking about how to use the hybrid core linking to make a better uh, elastomer to control its mechanical properties. Then the second part we are talking about how to make smart bioelastomer. Uh, today we will focus on the self healing. What's the self healing? It's just like our skin. When you cut it, give it some time, it will come back. The wood healing process inspired our researchers to think, hey, can, can we make something yeah, similar to this skin? Yeah, just for example, uh, uh, we now, now we call it uh, self-healing materials. It will uh, significantly extend the self life and enhance the use safety and uh, reduce the maintenance uh, cost that can be used in the value field, for, uh, including the medical engineering. Here, uh, we are also start from very similar structure as we just uh, uh, mentioned. Here, we uh, just uh, add some hydrogen bonding unit. We are not going to cross link it. So uh, it essentially a fully physical cross link the network. Then uh, this hydrogen bonding, because it is extensive, so it still can keep a good electricity. Uh, elasticity and because it's uh, essentially a physical costing, so the processing is very easier. Then also it can make uh, it can be self healed. Yeah, uh, in a relative mild conditions, uh, it can self heal. Uh, uh, including the the scratch of fields and or even the uh, strip you cut it, put it back, then it will uh, it will be held almost back to original state within. Uh, 30 minutes at uh, 60 degrees C. But uh, uh, yeah, uh, the problem is uh, the temperature is still a little bit high, especially for biomed biomedical applications. Well, in our body, we are 37 degrees C. Also, the 30 minutes are still bit, uh, a little bit long. They are too long for the real applications. So uh, we are thinking about uh, can we make the self-healing conditions even more mild. Here is our uh, designs. We are we are use uh, the acid uh, induced uh, ring opening polymerization, the, uh, chemi the chemical synthesized method we, we just mentioned. Here we designed this very special diepoxide. Yeah, it uh, contains this polyurethane unit. This unit is to produce the hydrogen bonding, but this hydrogen bonding is much weaker than previous ones. But here is from this synthesis, we, we can see actually each repeated unit, it will have one polyester unit, one polyurethane unit. So the number of this hydrogen bonding is uh, extensive. Then the whole strength of this uh, hydrogen bonding is still strong enough to give it uh, uh, suitable mechanical properties. Also, uh, because the each of the hydrogen bond is really weak, so the dynamic, the dynamic nature of this uh, network is quite high, then uh, it will give us better self-healing pro properties. Yeah, actually, this structure is uh, resemble to the cell wall. Cell wall is the uh, in, in cell wall, that uh, there's one of the uh, substance called uh, uh, peptidoglycan. Yeah, it has a very similar uh, repeating the hydrogen bonding network. Then this is the real result. Yeah, we can see when we cut the film within almost one minute, one minute, yeah, it can almost come back to original level. Yeah, also including the strip. When we cut it, give it some time, it will almost completely come back. But here, yeah, we, uh, we can still 
uh, mentioned, we have to mention the uh, strength here is not that high, it's only 0 0.5, 0 0.5 megapascal. Yeah, for the new application, we hope it's uh, higher, but uh, typically when you increase the self-healing properties, usually you will make the uh, mechanical strength lower. Yeah, it, uh, how to combine the, combine this contradictory the properties is this actually the big challenge for self-healing material field field there's a lot of study about uh, uh, this direction uh, but uh, until now i think uh, there's no uh, there's uh, no unit method uh, yeah to produce very tough while uh, better value uh, but uh, uh, very well the yeah uh, self-healing uh, materials here is our design yeah our design uh, it is a uh, polyurethane yeah all this actually is the typical the starting materials for the polyurethane widely used yeah as a elastic material in our daily life the uh, our design is very special is we add this dng uh, these chemicals we can see from here we can synthesize the uh, this uh, specific uh, polyurethane. The polyurethane because uh, this bond, yeah, or yeah, oxygen urine bond. We call it the oxygen urine bond. Actually, uh, it's very dynamic. It can, uh, re uh, it is reversible at even at the room temperature. And also this this structure we can see here is uh, very well that can can uh, to coordinate to. Uh, the metal ions, for example, like copper ions, yeah. Then uh, the structure will become like this. It have three type cross linking actually. One is uh, hydrogen bonding extensively in polyurethane materials. It is also uh, chemical cross linked and uh, very spacious here. It have uh, the copper coordinated bonds. This bond plays a very important. Uh, Loads, yeah. It provide additional cost linking, so it significantly enhance the mechanical properties, and also it weaken. It served as a Lewis acid catalyst. It weakens the urine bond and significantly enhance the dy dynamicity of uh, this bonds, and overall it actually enhances the the self healing property. So use this mechanical, uh, th this molecular designs, actually we produce the very strong, while how uh, good self healing properties for the This uh, This uh, result, yeah, it can be self healed at a room temperature and the mechanical properties of these materials uh, is uh, higher actually than previous reported the room temperature self-healing elastomers. Yeah, high, uh, the mechanical, the tensile strength and the uh, uh, toughness are both higher. The, uh, now, uh, after we got uh, the good material, we're also thinking about how to use it. Yeah, this is uh, the example, how to use the, our self-healing materials to, uh, to to make better uh yeah uh, to to make some um biomedical applications yeah here is uh, one uh disease we call the uh, aneurysm yeah aneurysm actually uh, part of our vessels uh, is ill then it will uh, expand more and more eventually it will broken so it uh, will kill the people yeah very dangerous the, uh, uh, until now, there's actually no very good yeah, treat, clinical treatment for this disease. Uh, our idea is we use our self-healing fields. We wrap it because it's self self-healed. We can uh, make a thin thinless tube, yeah, in in situ. The, because our uh, our tube actually is elastic, so it can prevent the expansion of uh of uh, of the vessels actually uh, it uh, it can prevent the further development of disease of this disease so eventually uh, it will have uh, much better the uh, clinical uh, out outcomes 
yeah now we actually uh, do it in uh yes animal models i hope later uh, it will uh, give us a very simple but efficient uh, clinical treatment for this type of disease as uh, as much as we know <laughs> this is probably the uh, uh, first examples we are really use the uh, self-healing properties for the uh, in vivo in vivo the tissue repairing applications yeah actually we also uh, to the mechanical properties of our self-healing materials soft and hard we we can control the mechanical properties then use it for the bone fix and all also can be used for the nerve the uh, connection of the of the nerve both actually from the animal study we uh, look some promising the results later we hope more and more biomedical applications can be found uh, in self-healing materials yeah then third part we are talking about how to how to uh, fa fabricate our elast elastomers to make a 3d yeah controlled structures uh, this is uh, the material we just mentioned the core pgs it is core linked very good elastomer but uh, the core link is very good for elasticity but also it bring a challenge for the fabrications actually we can see there's a lot of method how how we develop for this type of materials but uh, it typically uh, takes some uh some time the time consuming it uh, it uh, it is a multi-step process uh the overall designs actually uh the design freedom is very limit limited yeah it's uh, uh very difficult for thick uh constructs wide applications it, now the L1 no 3D printing, yeah, it has very uh, good tools to manufacture the materials for bio, especially for biomedical applications and things. Yeah, but uh, here uh, we can see uh, in the 3D printing, the processing is is relatively fast. We hope our uh, elastomers can be solidified rapidly when it uh, was printed from the nozzle. But our uh, elastomer will cost link a uh, chemical cost link. So uh, uh, typically, the cost linking uh, before the cost link, it is very, very uh, yeah viscous as essentially very viscous. Uh, we can see it almost like liquid or some something yeah uh, like that. It's not a elastomer. It cannot hold the structures. So how how to yeah overcome these problems? Uh, our best is is use this yeah we you we combined the the sodium uh yes uh, the the sodium chloride particles yeah uh with our pgs pre polymers then this give us a composite ink it can be printed it can keep the shape very well even at a high temperature and vacuums after you print you cross link it at a high High temperature vacuums, uh, the chemical cross link network uh, is already formed. Then, then you can, uh, then uh, you can put it in water. Then all the uh, source will be removed very easily. Yeah, dissolved in water. Just they use this method. Actually, we can print uh, yeah different uh, uh, types yeah shapes yeah from the micro to my to macro structure. We can control it very good. And also later we uh, uh, develop another uh, technology we call the uh, yeah four we call the four axis printing yeah we can direct it to make tubular scaffolds and also this method is very uh, wide ap uh, applicable uh, to other thermal state materials yeah uh, for example polyurethane epoxide resins and also we demonstrate this app. Uh, its applications for the uh, myo for of to against the myocardium yeah myocardium the uh, remodeling yeah very uh, important very uh, uh, important challenge for uh, clinical uh, treatment because it uh, can be printed it is elastic it can support uh, give a very good mechanical support. 
And also next, uh, another 3D printing work, actually we, we are trying to make uh, the, the, the mimic, the mimic uh, vessel network because it is very important, very essential for our, for, for all the, almost all the teachers. But how to make it? There's a lot of uh, reports in the field, but uh, uh, it is, it, you can see it is really, relatively hard. It uh, uh, needs a lot of uh, advanced uh, uh, machines to do it. Then our designs, we try to make this, uh, uh, try to, to, to work out a simple, efficient, and general way to uh, make the, this uh, uh, vessel like. Uh, network channel, uh, yeah, channel the networks. I show here. I actually uh, our our designs. We we uh, how how we use it. Uh, how we do it. We can see. Oh, oh sorry. Uh, I miss. I probably miss a a slide. Okay. We actually uh, do three D printing of uh, the sugar. Okay. Everyone uh, know we eat the uh, sugar. After we three D printing it, then we coat our uh, materials outside, outside. Then we dissolve it. Then uh, after we coat it, then we put it in water. The the salt, uh, uh, the sugar will will be dissolved out. Then it will give us a, a lot of uh, connected channels. And also during the evaporation of our uh, the the problem solution, uh, evaporation of the so solvent, actually uh, we can control the conditions. To use the free separation mechanism to uh, produce the permeable the wall. Yes. So uh, this is uh, our result. You can see, yeah, it is a lot of connected uh, channels and a lot of pores. Yeah. And uh, from here, actually, you can uh, you can see it essentially can uh, is uh, uh, perfusible and also uh, it is uh, it have permeable walls. Uh, things in the three D printing you can print uh, uh, any shape. Yeah. For example, like here. Uh, you want okay. This, this is the whole story of our this uh, uh, 3D printing technology. We print actually sugar, then we coat in the materials, then we use it for cell culture, and uh, also actually we also uh, did some work for uh, prevent uh, uh, to uh, serve as a hard patch, yeah, to treat the uh, uh, the myocardial yeah, disease. And also uh, later, actually, we already de developed the new elastomer. Yeah, we just mentioned the polyoxin uli. It, uh, it is actually dynamic, the uh, coarsening the network, including the covalent bond. It is a dynamic covalent bond. Yeah, so uh, itself can actually can be directly 3D printed, make it uh, much easier. And also actually here, we can do something uh, that's very different from typical material. For example, here, for this type of shape, actually you can not directly print it. For example, for, for the cap here, if you print this cap first, because it needs some support, actually. It needs some, some so in the middle part, there's no support, you cannot directly print it. The our strategies, actually, we can divide it into some small parts. These parts are very easy to see the printed. After you see printed, then, then, then you put them back. At that time, because it uh, has self healing properties, all these small parts can be self healed together. Can be self healed together. Then, uh, uh, then also, uh, actually, we uh, give it a sound. Sometimes we measure the X, Y, Z axles, the mechanical properties. Typically, for three D printing, the mecha mechanical uh, properties at the Z uh, axis is really weak, but here. From here, you can see actually uh, in our. Excuse me, uh, sir. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm sorry to interrupt, but I think we are running out of the time. Oh, okay, 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 okay. Sorry, I will. Okay, almost down, I think. Almost down. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, last slide. Okay. Oh, sorry. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, also, actually, finally, uh, we got stories. We use our sweeping printing technology, our elastomers. Actually, recently, uh, we um, make also. Uh, uh, Epicardo device, it is quite uh, useful. Uh, oh, yeah, uh, go to the end. Okay, this uh, we are quite focused on the elastomers. We are doing it 3D printing and uh, uh, working for the biomedical and the electronic applications. This is my group, yeah. Uh,
looking forward uh, if you have any questions you can just email me yeah uh, if help, you can visit my web uh, website yeah thank you very much <laughs> oh yeah this is uh, our cam campus welcome to Donghai university yeah